You know, I never really believed in miracles or anything that couldn't be explained by the rational mind. I've always thought that life was about the tangible, the concrete. Especially in my line of work as a firefighter, you deal with what's in front of you, the immediate danger, the fire you can see and smell and feel. But there was this one night, a night that would forever alter the very fabric of my reality and challenge everything I believed in. It started just like any other shift. The station was alive with the usual banter, the air filled with the aroma of coffee and the sound of laughter. I was Jacob Hall, just a regular guy, 38 years old, who found his calling in saving others from the wrath of uncontrolled flames. It's a job that keeps you on your toes, where no two days are alike, and that night was no exception. The call came in just after dinner, breaking the comfortable lull that had settled over the station. A family home engulfed in flames, with reports of children trapped inside. My heart raced as we suited up. There was no time for hesitation. Lives were at stake and every second counted. As we approached the scene, the sky was painted in ominous shades of orange and black. The house a monstrous inferno threatening to consume everything in its path. The sound of the fire was deafening, a beast roaring in fury. I felt a knot form in my stomach, but I pushed through the fear. This was what we trained for, what I lived for. We sprang into action, unspooling hoses and strategizing our approach, but my mind was fixed on the trapped children. I could hear their screams, a sound no training could ever prepare you for. It cut through the chaos, anchoring me to my purpose. I made my decision in an instant. I was going in. The heat was like nothing I'd ever faced, a physical barrier that fought against every step. Smoke clouded my vision, reducing the world to mere shadows and flickers of light. I moved instinctively, guided by the cries for help. When I finally found them, two scared kids huddled under a table. Time seemed to stand still. Their eyes were wide with terror, but in that moment, they saw me as their protector, their hope. I scooped them up, one in each arm, and made my way back through the labyrinth of flames. Just as I neared the exit, salvation within reach, the world exploded. A backdraft, a firefighter's nightmare. I felt myself lifted off my feet, thrown back into the blaze. The impact knocked the wind out of me, and as I struggled to breathe, the flames closed in. And then, something extraordinary happened. Amidst the suffocating heat and the encroaching flames, a sense of peace washed over me. It was as if the fire no longer touched me, as if I were somehow apart from it all. The pain and the fear faded, replaced by an overwhelming tranquility. I could see my own body lying there, my team fighting desperately to reach me, but I felt no urge to return. I was somewhere else, somewhere far beyond the physical world. In those moments, suspended between life and death, I saw what I can only describe as a light. It wasn't like any light I'd seen before. It was purer, brighter, and filled with an indescribable warmth. It beckoned to me, promising comfort, promising peace. I found myself moving towards it, drawn by an irresistible force, ready to embrace whatever lay beyond. But this was just the beginning of my journey, a journey that would show me the true meaning of hope and peace, a journey that would change me in ways I never could have imagined. As I moved towards the light, the sound of the crackling flames and the distant shouts of my comrades faded into silence. It was like stepping into another realm, one that was governed by serenity and an inexplicable sense of belonging. The warmth of the light enveloped me, soothing every fear, healing every wound. I realized then that I wasn't just moving away from the physical world. I was moving towards something profoundly familiar, yet utterly unknown. In this space between life and death, time lost its meaning. It felt like an eternity and a moment all at once. I was aware of my body lying motionless back in the burning house, yet I felt more alive than ever. It was an out-of-body experience that defied explanation, a sensation of complete detachment from the physical constraints of existence. The light grew brighter, more inviting, and as I drew closer I began to perceive shapes within it. Figures, made of the same indescribable light, started to emerge. They were beings of pure energy, exuding an overwhelming sense of love and peace. I felt a connection to them, a bond that transcended language and form. It was as if they had been waiting for me, ready to welcome me into their fold. They communicated not with words, but with emotions, with knowledge that flowed directly into my consciousness. I understood then that they were my guides, beings who had once walked the earth just as I had. They were here to show me the path forward, to help me understand the purpose of my journey. One of the beings stepped forward, its light brighter than the others. It radiated a sense of unconditional love, a love that filled every corner of my being. In its presence, I felt every worry melt away, every question answered. It was a love that spoke of home, of a place where I belonged. 
The being shared with me visions of my life, but not just the moments I remembered. I saw the impact of my actions, the lives I had touched without even realizing it. Every kind word, every selfless act rippled through these visions, touching the lives of people I had long forgotten. It was a life review that showed me the true value of my existence, not measured in accolades or achievements, but in love and kindness. But it was not just my past that was revealed to me. The being showed me the potential of my future, the lives I could still touch, the love I could still spread. It was a future filled with hope, with the promise of making a difference in ways I had never imagined. As I basked in the light and the love of these beings, I came to a realization. I had been given a choice. The light that beckoned me was not just an end, it was a beginning, a threshold to a new existence. But the visions of my future, the unfinished symphony of my life, stirred something within me, a desire to return, to complete the work I had begun, to live the life that was still waiting for me. The decision to return was mine to make, and it was not an easy one. The peace and love I experienced in that realm were unlike anything I had known, but the pull of my unfinished life was strong, a call to return that I could not ignore. With a heart full of gratitude and a soul touched by the divine, I chose to return. I chose the unfinished business, the challenges, the joys and sorrows of a mortal life. As I made my decision, the beings of light surrounded me, their warmth and love a comforting embrace as I began the journey back to the physical world. The transition was swift, a falling sensation that ended as abruptly as it began. I opened my eyes to the blur of movement, the sound of voices, the sting of smoke in my lungs. I was back, lying on the ground outside the burning house, my comrades leaning over me, their faces a mixture of relief and concern. I had returned from the brink, from a journey between two worlds that had changed me forever. But this was only the beginning of a new chapter, a chapter where the lessons of the light would guide me towards a deeper understanding of hope and peace. Lying there, surrounded by the faces of my fellow firefighters, their eyes wide with a mixture of shock and relief, I felt a profound disconnect from the world I had returned to. The flames that once threatened to consume everything in their path were now being subdued, their fury reduced to smoldering embers. I was pulled from the wreckage, my body battered but my spirit untouched, carrying within me the serenity of the realm I had just left. Recovery was both a physical and spiritual journey. Each breath I took was a reminder of the choice I had made to return, and with it came a deluge of emotions I struggled to comprehend. The vivid memories of my near-death experience, the beings of light, and the overwhelming sense of love and peace. How could I reconcile these with the tangible, often harsh reality of my everyday life? I found myself at a crossroads, living between two worlds. The physical scars would heal, but the spiritual awakening I had undergone was a flame that could not be extinguished. I was no longer the same man who had entered that burning house. I had glimpsed something beyond, a realm where hope and peace were not just ideals, but the very fabric of existence. The decision to share my story was not an easy one. How could I convey the depth of my experience, the profound changes it had wrought within me, without sounding like I had lost my grip on reality? But the more I reflected on my journey, the more I realized that my experience had bestowed upon me a responsibility to spread the light I had been so graciously given. I began to speak of what I had seen and felt, first to my family and close friends, then to anyone who would listen. The reactions were mixed. Some listened with rapt attention, moved by the sincerity of my words, while others dismissed my tale as the delusions of a man who had come too close to death. Yet it was not validation I sought, but the chance to plant a seed of hope to remind others that even in our darkest moments, there is light to be found. The transformation within me was undeniable. I returned to my duties as a firefighter with a renewed sense of purpose. The fear that once shadowed every call was replaced by a calm certainty. I had faced death and returned. What more could life throw at me that I could not handle? But it was not recklessness that fueled my courage. It was the knowledge that whatever happened, there was a peace beyond understanding waiting on the other side. My journey had also instilled in me a profound appreciation for the simple moments, the everyday miracles that we often overlook. A smile, a kind word, the beauty of a sunset. These were the threads that wove the tapestry of life, each one precious and significant. As I stand before you now sharing my story, I do so not as a man who has conquered death, but as one who has been forever changed by his encounter with it. I have been given a second chance, not just to live, but to live with purpose, to spread hope and peace in a world that so desperately needs it. Thank you for listening, for allowing me to share a piece of my journey with you. May you find comfort in the knowledge that there is more to this life than we can see. And may the light that guided me home illuminate your path as well.